Did anybody notice there was some stuff going on this week? Yeah. A lot of memes about that stuff too, right? Are we ready to laugh just a little bit about, I mean, if we're not, if we're not laughing, we're going to be crying, right? So my favorite meme that was shared with me is the one that says, I think 2021 just turned to 2020 and said, hold my beer. (laughs) There is something very, very funny about that. (laughs) But unfortunately, the events that happen in Washington, D.C. are far from funny. And I think if I didn't say anything about it, it would be very, very uh, suspicious. Why on earth wouldn't I say anything? But I might not say what you might want me to say. In fact, all of you. Some of you might be wanting me to speak out and say, see, finally, let people know it's It's finally been proven to us. We had a crazy man in the White House. Let those priests, that Father Altman who who spewed out all that hateful stuff before the election, put him in his place. In fact, Father Dave, why don't you challenge him to a cage fight? (laughs) That's what some of you might be wishing I would say. I'm not going to say that. Because there's others who would want me to say, don't believe what you see in the press. Okay? Don't believe it. Uh, there's, uh, it's, it's not real Trump supporters that did that. It's Antifa. It's this. It's that. I'm not going to say that either. What I believe I need to hear, and what all of us who consider ourselves Christian, what we have to hear is what role have I played in the events that have unfolded last summer, this last week? Where am I personally responsible? Because I think the human condition leaves us in a place where we want to put blame. I have read all kinds of articles. I've read them from uh, Catholic uh, out, uh, outlets, etc., who are all about putting the blame and it's all out there. It's not here. Let's just have a show of hands and anybody, anybody online with us today? Anybody perfect? Show of hands. Go ahead and comment. Stop. Hey, no. Okay. None of us are perfect. And so what we can do, and I think the most important piece in going forward in a good way is finding out what can I do to be part of the solution. I'm not saying that there aren't people that need to be held accountable. I'm saying that's not my job. I don't think it's anybody in this church's job either. Just my luck, there's somebody probably watching online. It's like, uh, that's my job. (laughs) Okay, if it is, please do your job. But our job as Christians is to strive to be a part of the healing that is so obvious 
that it needs to be done. Healing is so desperately needed in our country. We knew that last summer. We've been reminded of it this week. Pope Francis, uh, he, uh, he wrote some words that, uh, that might be helpful for us to uh, pay attention to. If you would please allow me to read to you just a little bit. Our own days seem to be showing signs of a certain regression. Ancient conflicts thought long buried are breaking out anew while instances of a myopic, extremist, resentful, and aggressive nationalism are on the rise. In some countries, a concept of popular and national unity, influenced by various ideologies, is creating new forms of selfishness and a loss of the social sense under the guise of defending national interests. Once more, we are being reminded that each new generation must take up the struggles and attainments of past generations while setting our sights even higher. This is the path. Goodness, together with love, justice, and solidarity are not achieved once and for all. They have to be realized each day. It is not possible to settle for what was achieved in the past and complacently enjoy it, as we could somehow disregard the fact that many of our brothers and sisters still endure situations that cry out for our attention. Indeed, there are situations that cry out for our attention. And so we have to, we have to, I think, refrain from that human tendency, that human response to blame others. but then to humbly recognize what do I need to do to be a part of the solution. We just heard in our scriptures today, John the Baptist, we're given the example of humility. There are people that wanted to just adore him and see him as You know, oh, he's the one we've been waiting for. And he says, no. I'm not worthy to unfasten the the straps of his sandals of the one who's really coming that we're waiting for. And then we have this feast of the baptism of the Lord. What does it have to say to us? We have this beautiful part in our scripture, Mark's gospel, where after uh, Jesus is baptized, he comes out and the skies open, the spirit in the form of a dove descends upon him and we hear the Father's voice. You are my beloved son. With you I am well pleased. It takes me back to uh, the, the program I finished a year ago in February. Seems like about 10 years ago uh, because this whole thing started happening to our country after that, uh, a worldwide pandemic. Wow, doesn't last February seem a long, long time ago? But one of the first things that they, they shared with me in the, the Institute for Priestly Formation Spiritual Direction training program that I just finished last February was R-I-M. 
relationship, identity, and mission. Mission is that which we strive to do, right? It's, it's the action. It's the going out, which we're all called to do, right? I keep reminding us all of that. At the end of Mass, we go out to live what we have just celebrated, what we have just received, the body of Christ. We are sent out. We're sent on mission every week. Identity is that. It comes in lots of different forms. We all have lots of different identities. We can see ourselves, identify ourselves as a Christian, as a Catholic. We can identify ourselves in many other ways as well. Right? Republican, Democrat, Nebraskan, Cornhusker fan, Hawkeye fan, gay, straight, bisexual. We have all different kinds of identities that we can identify with. But before our mission, before our identity, even as a Christian, the most important piece where we start is with relationships. our relationship with God. Because if we don't work on that relationship, then we can go and we can do good things. We can serve the poor. We can go and, and uh, work at the Heart Ministry Center. We can, you know, we can do all kinds of good stuff. But if it's not coming from that relationship... Might as well go and work for just a, uh, an NGO. It ha if we are going to be uh, truly living the mission that Jesus gives us, we have to realize that it starts with where we start today. The baptism and God the Father saying, you are my beloved son. And so we need to continually come back to this place, all of us, and hear, you are my beloved daughter. You are my beloved son. You and you and you and you and you and you and all of you are my beloved sons and daughters. You, I am well pleased with. That's where that relationship begins. And guess what? It puts all of us in relationship with each other as well. If we are God's sons and daughters, uh, we're all related then. We're all brothers and sisters. And so that's where our identity flows out of that as well. Regardless of whether we identify ourselves as Lutheran or Methodist or Catholic or gay or straight or Republican or Democrat or Husker or Hawkeye, all of those identities flow from brothers and sisters. And then we go and we strive to recognize that we can't be complacent. We can't just settle on, it's all good enough. Really? No. No. We all have work to do. Regardless of what our identities, what we ideologies that we uh, are aligned with, they're not perfect. So we come back to that invitation as sons and daughters. 
continually embracing that, that relationship offered to us. Here at Sacred Heart, we have a beautiful way to try to put that into context. In the Sacred Heart of Jesus. I have, a, I, I have this beautiful painting here that a friend I was able to meet a few months before he died, and I did his funeral right here, Dick Warsaki. He was a very well-known artist. His medium, skin. Tattoo artist, okay? So, so this, this up here, he turned it into a painting, but it, it started out as, as a tattoo. It's of the sacred heart. I love this image, but there's another one up there, okay? There's one in our side chapel. There's one in, in that window up there. Here at Sacred Heart, this is something I invite all of us into, to pray with that image of the sacred heart. And if you want, you can come and take a picture of this and keep it on your phone because it's going with me on retreat next week. Okay, I'm just saying. I'm, just not, I'm not leaving it here. The thing I really love about this one, and I brought it over here on Thursday, put it right there by the crib, because this one, the thorns, he includes the thorns around the sacred heart of Jesus, reminding us of the pain and the suffering that he endured. He's been there and done that before us. And this one has the fire of God's love coming out of that sacred heart. And, and Dick put it in the form of a torch, which suggests to me that we're all called to carry forth that love. It doesn't just stay with Jesus. Jesus. We are called to carry that torch of love. Even with those that don't identify the same way, the same ways that we do. As brothers and sisters of a God who loves us so much, we are called into that so that we can go forth then and live the mission we are called to live.